Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Today we got a, a final conclusion to the book of Exodus. And I think you're going to enjoy the way that it falls together. But first, let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, I lift up this lesson to you that you'll be honored and glorified, that people will truly understand the glory of God and the purpose of God and the purpose of Jesus Christ, his son, giving his life. Lord, I lift up those who have special needs and special prayer requests and those who are ill, those who have financial needs, Lord, and those who are just going through a hard time, Lord. And I just lift them up to you. And those who have a special burden, I lift up, Lord. Lord, help us through the trials and tribulations of life. Help this virus dissipate, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that, that you be with those that have lost loved ones because of it and other reasons. And, and God, we just lift up our church that you will be honored and glorified here. And I do pray for a move of God like none other that we will see the Spirit of God move upon the face of the earth and throughout the world, and we will see a great move of God and many come into the kingdom. We honor you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, today we're going to be starting in Exodus chapter 35, beginning in verse 39. And what I wanted to do is this conclusion is I want to look at, at how people were prepared because now they're building the tabernacle. Last week we studied how they all gave. They had a, they had a generous heart. They had a spirit ready to move. The, the Lord moved them to do the work of God. And the gifted people were, were, on, were inspired to do the work and we, as well as teach others how to do this work. And so people's hearts were changed and they were prepared. And that's the best way to prepare to meet God in church is, is and, and to have a church building be a a building of God because we need our hearts to be right. And when our hearts are right, God can move mightily in that situation. So he's prepared them and they're ready to build the tabernacle. So let's begin in verse 39. I mean, verse 30. And Moses said to the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur of the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the spirit of the Lord in wisdom and understanding, and knowledge and in all manner of workmanship, to de design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting jewels for setting and carving wood, and, and to work in all manner of artistic workmanship. And he has put in his heart the ability to teach. Isn't that amazing? God puts on your heart the ability to teach. And him uh, and, and Oliab, the son of Abishak, of the tribe of Dan, he has filled them with the skill of all manner of work of the engraver and the designer and the tapestry maker and blue, purple, scarlet thread and fine linen. And of the weaver, those who do every work and those who design artistic works and Bezalel and Oliab and every gifted artisan in whom the Lord has put wisdom and the understanding to know how to do all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary shall do according to all the Lord had commanded. And here's an amazing thing when people's hearts are right with God, what God can do a miracle. Verse 2 of chapter 36. And Mo, then Moses called Bezalel and Oliab and every gifted artisan in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, everyone whose heart was stirred to come and to do the work, and they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service and making the sanctuary. So they continued bringing him free will offerings every morning. Then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from the work he was doing, and they spoke to Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord has commanded us to do. Isn't that an amazing thing? People gave more than they needed. And, and what a blessing. You know, it says when he fed 5,000 men plus women and children, when Jesus fed them, there were 12 baskets left over. And when he fed the 4,000 plus women and children, there were seven baskets left over. There's always leftovers when God is moving. God gave the people a generous heart, and it shows the change of heart. They had to actually ask them not to give more. So Moses gave the commandment and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the, the camp saying, let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. 
and the people were restrained from bringing, for the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done. Indeed, too much. I'm going to talk about the different things they're going to build for the tabernacle now. We have discussed them in detail regarding all the, the, the intricate details, but they start by building the tabernacle, the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and they prepared it and they built all the poles and the pillars with acacia wood overlaid with gold and the, the bronze clasp and the silver sockets and, and the, the curtains that hung together with the gold chain and they were a fine linen and they engraved on them and they, they wove inside these curtains cherubim and, and just beautiful artistic work all throughout the tabernacle and the, the tent of meeting and, uh, and great building as they were preparing for God to come and God to be able to be worshipped. And then it goes on and it talks in verse 35, and then they made the veil of blue, purple and scarlet thread of fine woven linen. It was the work with an artistic design of cherubim. He made it with the four pillars of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold and their hooks uh, of gold. And he cast four sockets of silver for them. He also made the screen for the tabernacle door of blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen made by a weaver and its five pillars with their hooks. And he overlaid their capitals and their rings with gold, but the five sockets were bronze. They use the best material, and the first work they do is build the Ark of the Covenant <laughs> to put inside the tabernacle. Chapter 37, the making of the Ark. Then Bezalel made the Ark of Acacia wood. Two and a half cubits was its length, and a cubit and a half its width, and a cubit and a half its height. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and out, and made a molding of gold all around it. And he cast it four rings of gold to be set in the four corners, two rings on one side and two rings on the other. He made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. And he put on the poles into the rings of the sides of the ark to bear the ark. He also made the mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits was its length and cubit and a half its width. He made the two cherubim beaten gold. And he made them of one piece at the one end of the mercy seat. One cherub at one end on this side and the other cherub on the other end on that side. He made the cherubim at the two ends of the one piece of the mercy seat. The cherubim spread out their wings above and covered the mercy seat with their wings. They faced one another. The faces of the cherubim were toward the mercy seat. I love the name of the covering of the ark the mercy seat, where you find mercy and grace from God, the making of the table of showbread. All these articles are now being placed and, and built for the tabernacle. He made the table of acacia wood. Two cubits was its length, a cubit's its width, and a cubit its height, a cubit and a half its height. And he overlaid it with pure gold and made the molding of gold all around it. He also made the frame a hand breadth around it and made the molding of gold for the frame all around it. And he cast for it four rings of gold and put rings on the four corners that were at the four legs. And the rings were close to the frame as the holders of the poles to bear the table. And he made the poles of acacia wood and to bear the table and overlaid them with gold. He made pure gold the utensils which were on the table, the dishes, its cups, its bowls, its pitchers for pouring the golden lampstand. The table of showbread, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He gives us life, the table of showbread. The golden lampstand. He also made the lampstand of pure gold. Of hammered work, he made the lampstand. Its shaft, its branches, its bowls, its ornamental knobs, and the flowers were of one piece. And six branches came out from the sides. Three branches of the lampstand out of one side, and three branches of the lampstand out of the other side. There were three bowls made like almond blossoms on one branch with an ornamental knob and a flower, and three bowls made like almond blossoms on the other branch with an ornamental knob and a flower. And so he made six branches coming out of the lampstand. 
And on the lampstand itself were four bowls made like almond blossoms, each with its ornamental knob and flower. There was a knob under the first two branches of the same, a knob under the second two branches of the same, and a knob under the third two branches of the same, according to the six branches extended from it. Their knobs and their branches were of one piece. All of it was one hammered piece of pure gold. And he made it seven lamps, its wick trimmers and its trays of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold he made it with all the utensils. The golden lampstand. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Jesus also said in the Beatitudes, he says, you are the light of the world. The golden lampstand. The altar of incense before the veil. And it says, he made the incense altar of acacia wood. Its length was a cubit and its width a cubit. It was square and the two cubits its height. Its horns were of one piece and he overlaid it with pure gold. Its top, its sides, all around its horns. And he also made for it a molding of gold all around it. He made two rings of gold of it under its molding by its two corners on both sides as holders of the poles which which to bear it. And he made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. So the altar of incense. Psalm 141, 2 says, Let my prayer be set before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Revelation chapter 5, verse 8 says, And the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Isn't it amazing? Our prayers go right into the throne room. And God, God, it's like a sweet aroma to God, and He remembers them. An amazing thing. The anointing oil and the incense. He also made the anointing oil and its pure incense of sweet spices according to the work of the perfumer. The bronze altar. Chapter 38. He made the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood. Five cubits was the length and five cubits its width. It was square. And the height of it was three cubits. And he made its horns on the four corners. And the horns were of one piece with it. And he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the utensils of the altar. The pans, the shovels, the basins, the forks, the fire pans. And its utensils he made of bronze. And he made a grate of bronze network for the altar under its rim, midway from the bottom. He cast four rings for the four corners of the bronze grating as holders of the poles. And he made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. Then he put the poles into the rings on the sides of the altar in which to bear it. He made the altar hollow with boards. Mark 10, 25 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to serve, to, to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus gave his life on the altar. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The bronze altar. The bronze laver, also called the bronze basin, that holds the water. It says, and he made, this is... Um, Verse 8, he made the laver of bronze and its bronze base of bronze from the bronze murals to the serving of the women who, who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. This is where they washed. This is where the, the priests were clean before they entered into the tent of meeting to the holy place. They had to be clean before God when they entered into the holy place. James 1.23 says, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. One of the things about the bronze laver or the basin is you could see your reflection in it. And you could see who you are. And God wants us to understand who we are. You see your own reflection as a mirror and who you truly are. Ephesians 5, 25 through 26 says, Christ also loved the church and he gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her for the by the washing of water by the word. God cleanses us. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is a holy God and he wants us to be clean before him. 
the bronze basin, the laver, the courtyard. It talks about building the courtyard and all the curtains with the fine uh, embroidered cherubim within them and the, and the bronze clasp and the, the silver sockets and the, the poles or pillars of acacia wood holding the curtains together and folded around the courtyard, making the full and covering the tent of meeting of the tabernacle in the most holy place where the bronze altar and the bronze laver would be. The courtyard is constructed as God prepared. Verse 21, this is the inventory of the tabernacle, the tabernacle of the testimony, which was counted according to the commandment of Moses for the service of the Levites and by the hand of Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest. Bezalel, the son of Uri and the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord had commanded Moses. And with him was Oliab, the son of Abishah, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and designer, a weaver of blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine linen. All the gold that was used for the work of the holy place, that is, the gold of the offering, was 29 talents and 730 shekels. 730 shekels and, and 29 talents. A talent is a lot of shekels. That just shows the amount of gold that was put into this beautiful tabernacle. And the silver of those who were numbered in the congregation was 100 talents and 1,775 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. A becca for each man, that is a half a shekel, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. For everyone included in the numbering of 20 years old and above, for 603,305 and 50 men. 603,550 men were over 20 years old, counting women and children. That's how many people were in Israel at that time, of the people of Israel. And they all gave their census tax, the ransom money for the work of the ministry. And from the 100 talents of silver were cast the sockets of the sanctuary and the bases of the veil, 100 sockets from the 100 talents, one talent for each socket. Then from the 1,000... 775 shekels he made hooks of the pillars, overlaid their capitals and made bands for them. The offering of bronze was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. That's a lot of bronze, a lot of silver and a lot of gold. And with it he made the sockets of the door of the tabernacle of meeting and the bronze altar and the bronze grating for it and all the utensils for the altar, the sockets of the court all around and the bases of the court gate all the pegs for the tabernacle and all the pegs for the court all around. So they've, they've made everything for the tabernacle, the courtyard. Now they needed to make the garments, pre, the, the garments for the priest. Chapter 39. Of the blue, purple, and scarlet thread, they made garments of ministry for the ministering of the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron as the Lord had commanded Moses. He made the ephah of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and a fine woven linen. He then beat the gold into thin sheets and cut it into threads to work in it the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine linen into artistic designs. They made the shoulder straps for it to couple together, and it was coupled together with the two edges. And the intricately woven band of the ephah that was on it was the same workmanship, woven in gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and a fine woven linen, as the Lord had commanded Moses. And they set onyx stones, enclosed in the setting of the gold. They were engraved as signets are engraved. And the names of the sons of Israel, he put them on the shoulders of the ephod as the memorial stones for the sons of Israel, as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now the breastplate. And he made the breastplate artistically woven like the workmanship of the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread of the fine woven linen. They made the breastplate square by doubling it, a span of its length and a span of its width then doubled. And they set on it four rows of stones, a row of a sardis, a topaz, an emerald was the first row. A second row of turquoise, sapphire, of diamond, a third row of jacob, and agate and amethyst, 
The fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper, precious stones set in the breastplate. They were enclosed in the settings of gold in their mountings. There were 12 stones according to the names of the sons of Israel. According to their names engraved like a signet, each one with its own name according to the 12 tribes. And they made chains for the breastplate at the ends, like braided cords of pure gold. The breastplate. They have precious stones. Remember how it, God keeps you close to his heart. <laughs> and we're all individuals and he calls us all precious in his sight. God loves you more than you know and he wants to keep you close to his heart. And he knows us by name. Their names were engraved. <laughs> what a beautiful picture of the love of God and how he holds us close to him. Verse 22. He made the, he made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue, and there was an opening in the middle of the robe, like an opening of a coat of mail, with a woven binding all around the opening, so that it would not tear. They made of the hem of the robe pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet, and of the fine woven linen, and they made bells of pure gold, and put the bells between the pomegranates of the hem of the robe, all around between the pomegranates. Fruitfulness. A bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate all around the hem of the robe to minister in as the Lord had commanded Moses. They made tunics artistically woven of fine linen for Aaron and his sons, a turban of fine linen, ex ex exquisite hats of fine linen, short trousers of fine woven linen, and a sash of fine woven linen of blue, purple, and scarlet thread made by a weaver as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then they made a plate of, of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote on it the inscription like the engraver of the insignia, holiness to the Lord on their forehead. And they tied it with a blue cord and fastened it on the turban and the Lord had commanded Moses. <clears throat> the work is completed. Thus all the work of the tabernacle and the tent of meeting was finished. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so they did. And they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent of all its furnishing, its clasp, its boards, its bars, its pillars, and its sockets, and the covering of ram skins dyed red, and the covering of badger skins, and the veil of the covering, and the ark of the testimony with its poles in the mercy seat the table and all its utensils and the showbread, the pure gold lampstand with its lamps, the lamps set in order, all its utensils and the oil for the light, the gold altar, the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, the screen for the tabernacle door, the bronze altar, its greater bronze, its poles, and all its utensils, the laver with its base, the hangings of the court, its pillars and its sockets, the screen for the court gate, its cords and its pegs, and all the utensils for the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of meeting, and the garments for the ministry to minister in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron and the priest, and the son's garments to minister as priest. According to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did the work. Then Moses looked over all the work, and indeed they had done it as the Lord had commanded, just so they had done it. And the Lord blessed them. Chapter 40. They brought all the materials, all the artwork, everything that had been completed, they brought to Moses. Now it's time to build the church, to build the tabernacle and erect it. Chapter 40. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month you set up the tabernacle of the Ten of Meaning. You shall put it in the Ark of the Testimony and partition off the Ark with the veil. You shall bring in the table and arrange the things that are set in it and order in it. And you shall bring the lampstand and light the lamps. You shall also set the altar of gold for the incense before the Ark of the Testimony and put up the screen for the door of the tabernacle. Then you shall set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle and the tent of meeting. And you shall set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar and put water in it. 
You shall set the court all around it and hang the screen of the court gate. So they first build this tabernacle, the tent of meeting around the holy place and the most holy place. And they enter in with the Ark of the Covenant. And they pull off the mercy seat. And they set in there on the stone tablets written by the finger of God, the testimony of God, the Ten Commandments as we know them. And he set them inside the ark and he placed the mercy seat on top of them. Then they hung the veil and separated the place where God is from the place where men minister. And there was a separation because of the veil. And then inside the holy place they set the lampstand and they put fresh bread on it. And they put the lampstand and they trimmed the wicks and they lit it. And they filled it with oil and lit it to where the light started shining. And they put the altar of incense in front of the veil. And they filled it with the incense that God had commanded, the sweet incense and anointing oil. And they lit it. <laughs> and they had the incense and the flavor of the incense starting to, to flow as they're building the tabernacle and putting it together. And then it says, And you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it. And you shall hallow it and all its utensils and all shall be holy. You shall anoint the altar of the burnt offering and its utensils and consecrate the altar. The altar shall be most holy and you shall anoint the laver and its base and consecrate it. So they take the holy anointing oil and they anoint everything. They anoint things for the work of God and God anoints each of these items so they can be used for the work of God. It has the anointing of God on it and they built the the bronze altar and they put the laver and the bronze altar in the courtyard and they anoint them and this bronze altar it says is a holy place it's a holy altar because it's where Jesus gave his life on the cross it's a holy place and then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle meeting and wash them with water now start cleaning yourselves up and get ready you shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may minister to me as a priest. You shall bring his sons and clothe them with the tunics. You shall anoint them as, as you anoint their father that they may minister to me as priest for their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout the generations. So they, they deck the, the clothing on each of the priests and they prepare them and they put the breastplate close to their hearts and the onyx stones on their shoulders carrying the weight of the country on their shoulders and the, and the crown with the holiness to the Lord and the ephod and the bells and the pomegranates on the bottom of the robe and, and they, the, the priests are now ready after they had washed and put the garments on. Thus Moses did according to all the Lord had commanded him, so he did. And it came to pass in the first month of the second year on the first day of the month Boy, how specific is that about exactly when it happened? The first day, the first month of the second year on the first day of the month that the tabernacle was raised up. So Moses raised up the tabernacle, fastened its sockets, set up its boards, put its bars, raised up its pillars. And he spread out the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent on top of it. As the Lord had commanded Moses, he took the testimony and he put it in the ark. The ark inserted the poles through the rings of the ark and put the mercy seat on top of the ark. And he brought the ark in the tabernacle, hung up the veil of the covering and partitioned off the ark of the testimony as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put on the table in the tabernacle of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle outside the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tabernacle of meeting across from the table on the south side of the tabernacle and he lit the lamps before the Lord as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the gold altar in the tabernacle of the meeting in front of the veil and he burned sweet incense on it as the Lord had commanded Moses. He hung up the screen at the door of tabernacle and he put the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting and offered upon it a burnt offering and a grain offering, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, and put the water there for washing. And Moses, Aaron, and his sons would wash their hands and their feet with water from it. 
Whenever they went into the tabernacle of meeting, and when they came near the altar, they washed. So the Lord had commanded Moses, and he raised up the court all around the tabernacle and the altar and hung up the screen on the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Everything's there but the glory of God. Everything is prepared for God to come down. The hearts have been prepared, the giving, the building of it, the artistic work according to God's design. Everything's been anointed for God's work. Everything is ready. The ark is in there. The tes testimony, the golden, the, the stone tablets were in the ark. Everything was ready for God to show up, but they needed God to show up. You know, I heard a sermon one time that really touched me, and it says the whole goal of the tabernacle is how to get to God. How do you get to God? And if you look at it as an overview, the first thing you face, and you can see it on the screen, first thing you face when you enter the tabernacle and the temple is the altar. The first thing you face, if you want to have a relationship with God and know God, you have to face the cross. You have to accept Christ's sacrifice for you. He died for you. And you have to accept Him as Savior and Lord. And when you do that, then you can enter into the tabernacle, into the door. He is the door. He is the way. But you have to face the death of Jesus first and accept Him and ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Then we all need to look in the mirror and see ourselves for who we truly are and know if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And we need to be constantly washing with the water of the Word and, and washing ourselves with, with God in prayer and in Bible study so we are, we are clean before God. And then you're ready to enter the most holy, the, the holy place, the holy place. And inside you have the table of showbread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He is that bread that came down from heaven. He was that manna, that substance they needed. He says, I have bread to eat you know not of. But it's also the word of God as we are, we're to have fresh bread all the time. God wants to feed us from him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Fresh bread. You need to hear from God regularly. You need to have his life in you. His life is that bread. He gave his life. This is my body which is given for you. Then you have the lampstand. He is the vine. We are the branches. We have to have the oil of the Holy Spirit on the inside. He shall be with you and shall be in you. And when you know the Lord and the Holy Spirit is within you, he says, let your light so shine before men. But you need to constantly make sure that light is shining. And you need to be prepared to meet God. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you have the word of God and you pray as the altar of incense and you pray to enter into the presence of God and, and it's like sweet incense before God and worship, prayer and worship. You know, he inhabits the praises of his people but there's still a veil there. But then Jesus died and the veil of the temple was torn in two and the glory was revealed and now we can come boldly to the throne of grace we can enter into the very presence of God and you can meet God. <laughs> and in it is the mercy seat where we obtain mercy and grace for time of need. And the holiness of God, the cherubim where they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It is a most holy place. To be in the presence of God is the holy of holies. We're on holy ground. The final part of chapter 40. The cloud and the glory. The work is completed, but now the glory is going to fill the temple. Verse 34, Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle, and Moses was not able to, to enter the tabernacle of meeting because of the cloud rested upon it. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys, but if the cloud was not taken up, they did not journey till the day it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and fire was over it by night. In the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys, the glory of the God filled it to where even Moses couldn't enter in. Because of the glory of God, God shows up when people's hearts are changed and we go to meet God. You can know the living God and have a relationship with Him. Through the, through the 
the blood of Jesus. And that leads us to the end of Exodus. But I want to look at a couple of truths as we close. First, it's because God first loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He's the one that sent the deliverer. But you notice he says, I have come to set my people free. I have come to deliver them. He heard their cry and he told Moses to go because he's going to send the deliverer. But he would be that deliverer and he would come. That's the first lesson in Exodus. God initiates it. The next thing, the way they got out, all the miracles God did, all the plagues, the nine of them, God did all the work. But the tenth one, they had to apply the blood. But when they applied the blood of the lamb to the doorpost, then they got freedom. <laughs> you want to be set free from sin and bondage? You got to apply the door to your own heart. You got to accept Jesus as your savior by the blood of the lamb. And then once we get in, we cross over into a new life, just like they crossed the Red Sea. And through life, God will sustain us with manna and water from the rock. He will sustain us and he will help us through this life. He gives us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth and the Word of God to teach us and show us the way. And He also gives us hope because there is a way to God that we can all come to, the book of Exodus. And I want to close with this. And I want to tell you next week we're going to do the book of Hebrews, which is a great link between the Old and the New Testament. It tells you the tie between Exodus and how that ties to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How he is the fulfillment of all that happened in, ex in Exodus. So next week we'll start the book of Hebrews. But I want to close with this. To receive Christ as Savior, you must believe that he is God. You must believe you have sinned and sin separates you from God. And you have to believe that Jesus died for you. And he provided a way so that you could be saved. But you have to trust him. You have to apply the blood. You have to ask him into your heart and become your savior and forgive you of your sins. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes into righteousness and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth. And Romans 10, 13, a promise. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for making a way that you are, the, you are our way to God. And thank you for dying for us and paying our sin debt so that we can have a relationship with a living God. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.